Welcome to Electro Online. And now to put a little twist on the problem, we're going to start with an initial current source. Of course, we're still dealing with source-free parallel RCL circuits. So, in other words, once we open the switch, we essentially disconnect the current source from the rest of the circuit. Hmm. But now you may say, well, let's see here. Once you open the switch, what happens here? Well, things keep on working because now there's potentially a voltage across the capacitor or there's an initial current through the inductor will keep things going for a while until things of course die down. All right, uh, what we need to do here is we need to find the initial current, the initial voltage, and an equation for the voltage as a function of time. All right, let's see here. What would be the initial current? I initial is equal to, well, notice when the switch is closed, the current source will drive current through the circuit. Now, the inductor will act like a short circuit because after a while, after a steady state has reached, all the current will go through the inductor because the inductor only opposes a change in the current. The resistor will oppose a current to some extent using Ohm's law, and of course, and the capacitor, once it's filled up with charge, will not allow any current to flow at all. So, at that point, what we can say then is that all of the current will go through the inductor, therefore the initial current will be in the same direction as the arrow, or 4.5 amps. Okay, what about the initial voltage? The initial voltage is the voltage across the capacitor. Now you may think that, hey, shouldn't the voltage across the capacitor equal the voltage across the resistor equal the voltage across the inductor? And the answer is yes. But, since there's no current flowing through the resistor, there's no voltage drop across the resistor. And since there's no change in the current through the, uh, yeah, through the inductor, meaning there's no voltage drop across the inductor, that means there cannot be any voltage across the capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor must be zero volts. All right, so now we have the initial conditions there. Now let's see whether or not this is a overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped system. To do that, we need to find alpha. And alpha is equal to 1 over 2RC. Okay, that would be equal to 1 over 2 times the resistance, which is 20 ohms, times the capacitance, which is 4 millifarad, 0.004. Okay, what is that equal to? So we have 80 times 0.004. Take the inverse of that. Now let's find omega sub naught, the natural frequency, which is 1 over the square root of LC, which is equal to 1 over the square root of L, which is 10, and C, which is 0 0.004, like this. Okay, do I, I need a closing parenthesis there. So we end up with 0 0.04, take the square root, take the inverse of that, which is equal to 5. Let's see here, 20 times 40 something, something is wrong. 40 times 0 0.004, ah, I think I made a mistake. Ah, yes, it's double this. I pushed the wrong button, 6.25. All right, so now we can see that alpha is larger than omega sub naught, which means, therefore, this is an overdamped system. Yeah, sometimes I push the wrong buttons on my calculator, have to be careful here. Okay, if it's an overdamped system, then we note that the general equation, the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times E to the S1T plus A2 times E to the S2T. So the first thing we're going to do is find S1 and S2. We can say that S1 and S2 can be found by taking minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. So, looking for S1 first, that's minus alpha, that would be minus 6.25 plus the square root of 6.25 squared minus 5 squared. Okay, 6.25 squared minus 25, take the square root of that, is 3.75. 
So this is minus 6.25 plus 3.75. And so S1 is equal to 2.5. Yep, 2.5, but a minus, minus 2.5. And then S2 is equal to uh, minus 6.25 minus 3.75. It's a 5 there, and that's equal to minus 10. So now we have the values for S1 and S2, which means that the voltage as a function of time is equal to minus 2.5 e to the... Oh, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. That's not the A value. I still didn't find the A value yet, so A1 e to the minus 2.5 t plus A2 e to the minus 10 t. We have the S1 and S2 values. Now we need to find A1 and A2. So, what we can say here is that the voltage, uh, when it's equal to zero, when the time is equal to zero, is equal to zero. So zero equals this equation when, and I'll put a little star there, this equation when t equals zero. So this goes to one, this goes to one. So zero equals A1 plus A2. In other words, A1 equals the negative of A2. All right, they have the same value except one is negative and one is positive. Now we need to get a second equation. We know that the derivative of the voltage with respect to time when time is equal to zero is equal to the minus initial voltage plus initial current times R divided by RC. So let's see what that is equal to. Minus the initial voltage is zero plus initial current 4.5 times the resistance, I believe that was 20, divided by 20 times C, in this case C was 0.004. Okay, what's that equal to? So 4.5 times 20, which is 90, divided by 20, divided by 0 0.004, and we get 11. 25. Let's see, minus then, right? Minus 11.25. Let me try that again. Uh, that was 9, that's 4.5. 4.5 divided by 0 0.004 equals, so that is equal to minus 11.25. Okay, so now we need to take the derivative of our equation. So dvdt is equal to minus 2.5 a1 e to the minus 2.5 t minus 10 a2 e to the minus 10 t. And then if we set that equal to zero, we could now say that the derivative of the voltage with respect to time when the time is equal to zero, which is equal to minus 11.25, is equal to this equation when time equals zero, which means it's equal to minus 2.5 a1 minus 10 a2 and then we realize that one is the negative of the other so i can then write this as minus 11.25 is equal to minus 2.5 a1 plus 10 a1 or minus 11.25 is equal to 7.5 a1 which means that a1 is equal to 11.25 divided by 7.5, which is a minus 150, which means that A2 is a positive 150 because we know that A1 and A2 are opposites of each other. So now that I have the values for A1 and A2, I can plug that into my equation right here, and I can come up with the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1, and A1 is minus 150, e to the minus 2.5t and a2 is a plus 150 e to the minus 10t and now we have an equation that tells us the voltage as a function of time after t equals zero and so we have the initial current the initial voltage and the equation which is what we needed and that is how it's done it's correct. and it's correct One take.